Welcome to another edition of Coonrod's Corner. Today's topic, a basic tutorial of microwave PCB-based filters. Here's your host, John Coonrod. Hello and welcome to Coonrod's Corner. My name is John Coonrod. I am a technical marketing manager for Rogers Corporation. Today I'm going to spend a few minutes talking about filters and I'm going to give you a basic tutorial or overview for RF filters made with uh, high frequency printed circuit board technology. To begin with, anything that is wireless that transmits or receives is going to need a filter of some type. And there's many different types of filters out there and they all have different functions, but uh, basically a filter does as the name implies and it's going to filter out energy from one frequency and it's not going to allow frequency through at another frequency. So it pretty much blocks energy at one frequency and allows fr uh, energy at another frequency to go through. In this drawing I'm showing a low pass filter response and on the Y axis is loss and on the X axis is frequency. And you can see uh, loss at zero means uh, obviously no loss, so all the energy goes through at that point. And a loss of 80 dB, uh, all the, all the uh, energy is blocked pretty much because you have a huge amount of loss. So if you look at the x-axis, frequency axis, what you see is the energy from the frequency zero to F1, all the energy is going to be allowed through by the filter, and that's the pass band. So the term there is pass band, and that's passing energy through a band of frequencies with a loss very low. And then to the right of that is going to be the stop band, and that's where the filter is going to be blocking energy in the frequency range from F1 to F2. And you can see the loss there, as an example, is 80 dB. So it's pretty much shutting off all energy in that range of frequencies. There are several different RF filter functions. Uh, three of the most common are a low-pass filter, high-pass filter, and band-pass filter. These uh, can be made with several different attributes on a printed circuit board by the design of the, uh, the features on the board. But to begin with, let's take a look at the response of a low-pass filter. The first drawing is a low-pass filter and is similar to what we already discussed, but essentially what it's showing you is at low frequencies it's going to pass the energy through, and that's how it gets its name, low-pass, and at the higher frequencies it's going to block the energy. Now the next drawing is a high-pass filter, and it's pretty much the opposite of the low-pass filter. So at high frequencies it's going to allow the energy to pass through, the name, high-pass, and at low frequencies that energy is going to be blocked. And then finally, the bandpass filter is shown, and uh, in this particular drawing, you can see it's actually got two stop bands. There's a stop band at lower frequency, stop band at higher frequency, and the actual pass band, or the region of frequencies that the energy has passed through, is centered at F1. Now, how these filters are implemented in a printed circuit board are normally done by resonators. So a resonator is a structure on a printed circuit board that will generate a lot of energy at a very specific frequency. So at the bottom of this picture, you can see a top view drawing of the PC board with a resonator element. And the narrow lines are really the feed lines. That's what's feeding the energy to the resonator. And the resonator itself is the wider uh, feature there. And what happens is this wide feature will set up a standing wave at a certain frequency and generate a lot of energy at that frequency. And it will essentially resonate at a specific frequency. Now above this is a screenshot from a uh, network analyzer showing a microstrip resonator and in this case it's resonating about 9.9 .9 gigahertz. So resonators are used to put together a filter function and this is done by putting together several resonators very closely. A lot of times edge to edge and they're called edge coupled resonators or edge coupled filters. And in microstrip format, that's where the term comes from, microstrip edge coupled bandpass filter is very common. And I've shown that on the drawing here. So here in the drawing, you can see that there are multiple resonators put together side by side, and each resonator will resonate at a specific frequency. And if you can imagine, one resonator could be slightly different for a resonant frequency than another, and as you blend these different resonators together, they couple energy to cause a resonant peak that's stretched, you might say, in frequency, so you can get a band of frequencies that will resonate, or you can get a passband of a filter. There's actually a lot more to that story, but that's a good way to think about it anyway. So now let's look at a actual measurement of a microstrip uh, bandpass edge coupled filter. And uh, really what you're going to see is it does not have the very distinct sharp uh, drawing uh, as what I've been showing before from the stop band to the pass band. There's actually some curvature there and that's normal. In the picture you can see a top view of the microstrip bandpass filter and you can see resonators here. Now they're a little different than what I've drawn before because this is a little bit more detailed. But again, these are resonator or links of um, conductor elements that will resonate and join together and coupled together they perform a filter function. 
The top picture is a screenshot of this uh, microstrip bandpass filter being tested from a range about 1.5 gigahertz to 2.5 gigahertz. And again, you see it doesn't have that immediate stair step when going from the stop band to the pass band. And that's normal for bandpass filters. And actually, this is a pretty good bandpass filter when you look at the transition from stop band to pass band. This particular filter is centered at about 2 gigahertz. And you can see marker 4 there it says 2.05 gigahertz. And all things considered with fabrication tolerances, that's actually pretty good. This concludes this session of Coonrod's Corner. Thank you for watching. For additional information and technical tools, if you are not already a member, join the Rogers Technology Support Hub and gain access to calculators, technical papers, and more of Coonrod's Corner and other informational videos. Rogers Technical Information is also available at your fingertips with the Rog mobile app available for the iPhone, iPad, and Android devices. Check it out today.